Welcome to another video presentation of our series of Machine Builder Spotlights on ControlDesign.com. I'm Joe Feely, the editor of Control Design Magazine at ControlDesign.com. Today we're on the exhibit hall floor of 2007 Assembly Technology Show. I'm on my way to see Rudy Hutt. He's the president of Hutt Assembly Systems. We're going to talk to Rudy a little bit about one of the machines they have installed on the show, talk to him a little bit about the automation and controls that are embedded on that machine, and talk to him a little bit more about what that means in terms of performance for his customers. So we'll set ourselves up and we'll be right back. Okay, you've got your schematics designed. You know which controls you want to use. Now all you need to do is figure out which brand of components you want to place into your machine. Well, rather than sift through a sea of information by going to suppliers' websites, an easier step might be to go to controldesign.com and check out our 2007 Reader's Choice Award winners. There you'll find the most popular brands of every component you can imagine, from encoders to PLCs. So next time, before you start sifting through a sea of information, check out the Reader's Choice Award winners at controldesign.com before you take the plunge. Cannonball! I'm here this morning with Rudy Hutt. He's the president of Hutt Assembly Machines. He's going to tell us a little bit about one of the machines that uh, he has installed on the show floor today. Uh, Rudy, tell us a little bit about your company and then we'll get into your machine. Okay. Uh, our company exists since 1966 and we are building uh, all kinds of customer-made machines, especially assembly machines and also production machines for small metal parts, precision metal parts. We are all together uh, about 140 people and we are located uh, near Stuttgart with our main factory and we do have some other outside uh, factories uh, belonging to us where we produce, for example, uh, vibrator bolts or machine parts and we have one assembly plant in Switzerland uh, which also belongs to us where we build our uh, machining, uh, special machining machines. Now you got an interesting one here today that it's a nice combination of electromechanical, you've got a PLC involved, you've got some pneumatics involved. Talk a little bit about what this machine does because I know it's sort of an example of the type of technology you offer. But yeah. tell us why it makes sense for you to be combining these three technologies. Um, we are building basically mechanical driven machines. Uh, it means driven by cams. We are using PLCs, we are using pneumatic, we are uh, making a combination. Every machine is a special customer made machine. And uh, here we only show uh, an example of our basic machine, of our basic function. And we have a modular concept in our inline machines, uh, starting from one meter table up to four and a half meter built in one piece. We have a cam driven motor underneath here. Um, so explain what's going on a little bit in this machine. Uh, basically, uh, it's a machine as I said, is mechanical driven. The machine normally has one main motor. We drive uh, through a gearbox our main camshaft. The main camshaft uh, has all the cams for each station. And we are using uh, uh, a modular system also uh, with all our stations. Now tell me a little bit about the, uh, the operator panel. I, I, when we were talking earlier, you mentioned some remote diagnostics can happen here as well as setting up your configurations. Yes, this is for example uh, a touch panel, uh, what's mostly used now on our machines and it gives uh, back information to the machine operators. You can set it up, you can program it in a different way. This is a kind of a standard today in, in the machine building uh, business. So you were saying if there's a failure in one of the actuators, the operator is going to get a signal back here that he has a problem. Yes, it will, it will show up uh, in writing actually where is the problem and the operator can go and can solve the problem. Okay. Can you talk a little bit about exactly what's going on in the operation here? Uh, as I said, this is only to demonstrate our basic concept. So we got a spring winder going uh, on here? Here, here we, we show uh, how we uh, handle springs. Uh, an example, we have a spring winding station where we can produce a spring 
uh, while we assemble some components. A spring is normally very difficult to feed, especially when there are springs with a table shape, whatever. Uh, and that was the reason why we developed this kind of spring system to be able uh, to assemble it without uh, big problems. Now, in terms of uh, reliability, if there's a failure, if a spring doesn't drop, for example, I see, have we got a photo cell over here that's going to tell the machine that there's a problem? Is that um, uh, all our machines are fully uh, controlled. Uh, every station has a sensor. If we feed a part, we are checking if the part is there or not. If the part is missing, we are not going further with other assembly. This is a kind of a standard in assembly machines uh, we need today. We guarantee at the end of the machine we, we have good parts completely together assembled. Now, this looks to be, with the fairly limited PLC requirements for this machine, you're hardwired between some of your sensors. For some of your larger machines, do you use some of the more the newer digital networks? Yes, we do. And a smaller machine, it depends to the size of the machine. And a smaller machine, we use hardwire. And a complex, more complex machine, we go to a boost system. Okay. And you were saying that for your PLC, whether you're in Europe or in North America or in Asia, the, the type of PLC, the brand, is whatever your customer yeah, we, wants? Yeah, we talk to our customers, and if they require, for example, in America, we use uh, quite often Allen Bradley or other brands. We are flexible, we do what the customer wants, which helps also us for uh, in production, for maintenance. The people uh, uh, are more familiar, and that's why we do it. We have an interesting set of, of dynamics going on here, and uh, good luck for the rest of the show. Hi, Jim Montague, Executive Editor, Control Design Magazine here. I wanted to tell you about a great new invention that I've discovered, and I'll show it to you right over here. It's called a telephone. We always need input for feature articles and for other purposes at controldesign.com, so you can send an email, but please give us a call because the phone lines are always open. 